Okay, uh, whoever those people are, I, can't, I cannot see you with all the lights, but you don't look like either of the two. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President, and first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, touch on the issue of uh, uh, peace treaty, and also, uh, will you travel to Pingyang any time soon? Well, at a certain time, I will. I said that will be a day that I look very much forward to, at the appropriate time. And I also will be inviting Chairman Kim at the appropriate time to the White House. I, would, I think it's, it's really going to be something that will be very important. And he has accepted. I said at the appropriate time. We want to go a little bit further down the road. But what we signed today was uh, a lot of things included. And then you have things that weren't included that we got after the deal was signed. I've done that before in my life. We didn't put it in the agreement because we didn't have time. And I think most of you have been handed out the agreement or soon will, but uh, I, oh, you have not? Okay, well, if you could have those agreements passed out. We just finished them just a little while ago. Uh, but if you could have the agreements passed out, well, you'll see what we're talking about. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, I will second the congratulations, President. Um, Thank you. What part did Japan play, and did the abduction issue come up? And yes. Also, the fate of uh, uh, the Christians, and the yes. follow-up question is, uh, when will you be doing an interview with Japanese TV? 50,000 American troops are in Japan. That's true. Again. 50,000 great troops, that's true. Yeah, it did, abduction, absolutely. This is Prime Minister Abe's, uh, one of his certainly, other than the whole denuking subject, uh, certainly his, I would say, his main point. And I brought it up, absolutely, and they're going to be working on that. It will be, we didn't put it down in the document, but it will be worked on. Uh, Christians, yes, uh, we are, brought it up very strongly. You know, Franklin Graham spent, spent and spends a tremendous amount of time in North Korea. He's got it very close to his heart. Uh, it did come up and things will be happening. And thank you, great question. Yes, John. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank um, you, uh, Returning to the question of human rights, you spoke very powerfully on the issue uh, during your State of the Union address. You, right. you showed that you had the defector in the First Lady's box with the crutches uh, who escaped. And you, at that point, said that North Korea uh, has more brutally oppressed its people than any other regime on earth. Do you still believe that is the case, having having sat down with Kim Jong-un? And does he right. need to change that? John, I believe it's a rough situation over there. There's no question about it. And uh, we did discuss it today pretty strongly. I mean, knowing what the main purpose of what we were doing is, denuking, but uh, discussed it in, at pretty good length. Uh, we'll be doing something on it. It's, it's rough. It's rough in a lot of places, by the way. Not just there, but it's rough. And we will uh, continue that, and I think ultimately we'll agree to something. But uh, it was discussed at length outside of, outside of the nuclear situation, one of the primary topics. But do you think that needs to change to bring on this glorious new era you've talked about? Are they going to have to? I think it will change, yeah. I think it probably has to, but I think it will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Steve, that's you, Steve, right there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, what timetable do you envision for their denuclearization? And in the meantime, you, are you thinking about easing any sanctions? Well, you know, scientifically, I've been watching and reading a lot about this, and it does take a long time to, you know, pull off complete denuclearization. It takes a long time, scientifically. Uh, you have to wait certain periods of time, and a lot of things happen. But despite that, once you start the process, it means it's pretty much over. You can't use them. That's the good news. And that's going to start very, very soon. I believe that's going to start very soon. Uh, we will do it as fast as it can mechanically and physically be done, Steve. And the sanctions? Uh, the sanctions will come off when we are sure that the nukes are no longer a factor. Sanctions played a big role, but they'll come off at that point. I hope it's going to be soon, but they'll come off. They, as you know, and as I've said, uh, the sanctions right now remain. But at a certain point, I actually look forward to taking them off. And they'll come off when we, we know we're down the road where it's not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Okay? Thank you. Yes, go ahead, please. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Congratulations on this historic summit. Thank you very much. You Congratulations signed... to everybody, by the way. Congratulations to everybody. You, yes. you signed a document with Kim Jong-un. Uh, it's essentially a piece of paper. Yesterday we had a briefing from the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, and he said the following. Many presidents previously have signed off on pieces of paper, only to find that the North Koreans either didn't promise what we thought they had, or actually reneged on those promises. What makes this time different, Mr. President? Well, you have a different administration. You have a different president. You have a different Secretary of State. You have people that are, you know, it's very important to them, and we get it done. The other groups, maybe it wasn't a priority, I don't think they could have done it if it was a priority, frankly. I don't think they honestly could have done it even if it was a priority. And it would have been easier back then. Would have been For me, it would have been much easier if this were 10 years ago or five years ago. And I'm not just blaming President Obama. I mean, this goes back for 25 years. It should have happened. I was given a very tough hand. I was given this. I was given the Arandium and plenty of other problems. But we are... Um, we're doing really well. And the Iran deal, I have to be honest, we, I did it because nuclear is always number one to me. Nuclear is number one. But on the Iran deal, I think Iran is a different country now than it was three or four months ago. I don't think they're looking so much to the Mediterranean. I don't think they're looking so much at Syria like they were with total confidence. I don't think they're so confident right now. But I hope, with that being said, I hope that at the appropriate time, after these sanctions kick in, and they are brutal, what we've put on Iran. I hope that they're going to come back and negotiate a real deal, because I'd love to be able to do that. But right now, it's too soon for that. Yes, Mr. Please. President, you also did uh, talk about establishing diplomatic relations, yeah. uh, change, uh, exchanging ambassadors. How long before that happens? Uh, good question. Uh, hopefully soon, but we'll have to get things moving first. Very, a little bit early for that. We have to get things moving. Yes, go ahead. Hi. Can you clarify when you said you're stopping war games? So yeah. you are stopping the military exercises with South Korea? Yeah, we've done exercises for a long period of time working with South Korea. And uh, we call them war games, and I call them war games, and they're tremendously expensive. The amount of money that we spend on that is incredible and South Korea contributes, but not 100%, which is certainly a subject that we have to talk to them about also. And that has to do with the military expense and also the trade. So uh, we're doing that. We actually have a new deal with South Korea in terms of the trade deal, but we have to talk to them. We have to talk to many countries about treating us fairly. But the war games are very expensive. We pay for a big majority of them. We fly in bombers from Guam, I said it when I first started, I said, where did the bombers come from? Guam, nearby. I said, oh, great, nearby. Where's nearby? Six and a half hours. Six and a half hours, that's a long time for these big, massive planes to be flying to South Korea to practice and then drop bombs all over the place and then go back to Guam. I know a lot about airplanes. It's very expensive. So and, and I didn't like it. And what I, what I did say is, and I think it's very provocative. I have to tell you, Jennifer, it's a very provocative uh, situation. When, when I see that, and you have a country right next to it. So under the circumstances that we're negotiating a very comprehensive, complete deal, I think it's inappropriate to be having war games. So number one, we save money a lot. And number two, uh, it really is something that I think they very much appreciate it. Does North Korea give you something in return, though? Well, we've gotten, you know, I've, I've heard that. I mean, some of the, the people that, uh, I don't know, maybe they really mean it. I don't, I don't always want to go against the press, because I just don't, especially not today. This is too important. But I noticed that some of the people were saying that uh, the president has agreed to meet. He has given up so much. He gave up nothing. I'm here. I haven't slept in 25 hours, but I thought it was appropriate to do, because we've been negotiating for literally round the clock with them and with us and with John and with Mike and a whole team of very talented people. But we haven't given up anything other than you're right. I agreed to meet. And I think the meeting was every bit as good for the United States as it was for 
North Korea, but I, I just wrote down some of the things we got. And they, you know, they sure, they got a meeting. But only a person that dislikes Donald Trump would say that I've agreed to make a big commitment. Sure, I, I've agreed to take a period of time and come here and meet, and that's good. But I think it's great for us and I, as a country, and I think it's good for them. But what did they do to justify this meeting? Secured commitment for complete denuclearization. That's the big thing. They secured the release of three American hostages. They already gave them to us two months ago. These people are now living happily back in their homes with their families. And it was pretty rough for them, to put it mildly. Secure the commitment to recover the remains, including these are of fallen heroes. And they're giving a commitment, they're starting it immediately, to recover the remains. And I just went through how many people asked me about it. I was amazed, actually. So many people would ask me, is it possible? Is it possible? At that time, we had no relationship to Chairman Kim or to anybody else in North Korea. You know, it was a very closed society. Uh, so we're getting the remains back. Secure the halt of all missile and nuclear tests. For how long has it been? Seven months? You haven't had a missile go up. For seven months, you haven't had a nuclear test. You haven't had a nuclear explosion. I remember a nuclear event took place, 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale. And they announced, I heard it on the radio, they announced that a massive, you know, a, a earthquake took place somewhere in Asia. And then they said it was in North Korea, and then they found out it was a nuclear test. I said, I never heard of a Richter scale in the high eights. And if you look, there has been no missile launches. They've blown up their missile area that's going to take place. That has not been written into the contract. We're going to give you the exact details on that. But they secured a hold of all missiles and of all nuclear tests. They secured the closure of their single primary nuclear test flight, test site, all three of them, they're in an area that's common around each other. They secured the closure. They secured the commitment to destroy the missile engine testing site. That was not in your agreement. I got that after we signed the agreement. I said, do me a favor. You've got this missile engine testing site. We know where it is because of the heat. We, it's incredible the equipment we have, to be honest with you. I said, can you close it up? You're going to close it up. We maintain the ability to continue to apply sanctions. So we're applying sanctions. Now, I had 300 sanctions that I was getting ready to put on last week. And I said, you know, I can't really put on sanctions when I'm meeting with. I thought it would be very disrespectful. 300 very big ones, powerful ones. And I said it would be disrespectful. So, Jennifer, when you look at all of those things that we got, and when we got our hostages back, I didn't pay 1.8 billion in cash, like the hostages that came back from Iran, which was a disgraceful situation, what took place. So, <clears throat> we've gotten a lot. So when I hear somebody in the media say that President Trump has agreed to meet, like, it's not a big deal to me. I think we should meet on a lot of different topics, not just this one. And I really believe a lot of great things can happen. Yes, go ahead, please. Sir, um, you, you just listed off a lot of things that you say you got in this meeting. It wasn't too long ago, though, that you said you defined success of this meeting by North Korea giving up its nuclear weapons. Well, that's what they're doing. Well, can you talk about how sure. you... Sure, that's you, what they're doing. Okay, I, mean, I don't how think... How you the, 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 yeah. uh, Kim Jong-un... Uh, to, to, for a complete, verifiable, irreversible... Yeah, I, I did, honestly... And can you say why you didn't secure those details in this agreement? Because there's no time. I, I'm here one day. We're together for many hours intensively, but uh, the process is now going to take place. And I would be surprised, Mike, if they haven't even started already. They have started. They blew up their sites. They blew up their testing site. So... Uh, but I will say, uh, he knew prior to coming, you know, this wasn't like a surprise. It wasn't like we've never discussed it. We discussed it. Mike 
discussed it very, at, very strongly with his counterpart in North Korea. They knew that this was, let's say they didn't agree to that, I couldn't sign any agreement. There was no agreement that could have been signed. So they understood that. And it wasn't a big point today because really this has been taken care of more than any other thing, because it was all about this. This has been taken care of before we got here. So when we brought that up today, you see the language, it's very strong. It's in the document. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. President. Could you talk about the military consequences for North Korea if they don't follow through on the commitments that you're talking about? Well, I don't want to talk. Yeah, I know. That's a tough thing to talk about because I don't want to be threatening. I don't want to be threatening. They understood that. And you've seen what was perhaps going to happen. And you know, Seoul has 28 million people. We think we have big cities. You look at New York where it has 8 million people. We think it's a big city. Seoul has 28 million people, think of that. And it's right next to the border. It's right next to the DMZ. It's right there. I mean, if this would have happened, I think, you know, I've heard, oh, 100,000 people. I think you could have lost 20 million people, 30 million people. This is really an honor for me to be doing this because I think, you know, potentially you could have lost, you know, 30, 40, 50 million people. The city of Seoul, one of the biggest cities in the world, is right next to the, the border. You once spoke about fire and fury. Is that no longer the case? Well, at that time we needed perhaps fire and fury because we could not have allowed uh, that kind of capability from the standpoint of the United States. And certainly Japan wasn't going to allow it either. Japan is right next door. <laughs> One more thing, Mr. President, could you tell us about the video that you showed before this? Yeah. When did you show that to Kim? What was the goal Today. there? Yeah. We had it made up by some, I hope you liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was interesting enough to show. Uh, one in English and one in Korean. And we had it made up. Uh, I showed it to him today, actually during the meeting, toward the end of the meeting. And I think he loved it. He, they were given, we didn't have a big screen like you have the luxury of having, we didn't need it because we had it on a cassette and an iPad and they played it. And uh, about eight of their representatives were watching it and I thought they were fascinated by it. I thought it was well done. I showed it to you because that's the future. I mean, that could very well be the future. And the other alternative is just not a very good alternative. It's just not good. But um, I showed it because I really want him to do something. Now, I don't think I had to show it because I really believe he wants to, I think he wants to get it done. Yes, go ahead. How's Staten Island Ferry doing, okay? He wrote the best story about me with the Staten Island Ferry and after that he's never written a good story. It's a long time ago, what, sir. I don't know what happened, it's a long time ago. Mr. President, it's been a busy uh, week for you on the international stage. You're leaving this summit here in Singapore having determined that Kim Jong-un is a talented man. You left the G7 summit a few days ago in Canada having determined that Prime Minister Trudeau is weak uh, and dishonest. What do you say to America's allies who worry that you might be jeopardizing our long-term alliances and who worry that you might be treating our historic friends as enemies and our historic enemies as friends? Well, first, first of all, I think it's a very fair question. I had a very good meeting with the G7, and I left the meeting, and I'll be honest, uh, we are being taken advantage of by virtually every one of those countries, very, very seriously. Now, the United States, because of bad management at the top, because of presidents that didn't care about trade or didn't understand it or whatever reason, for many years, with China being obviously the most successful at it, but the European Union is second, 151 billion we lost. They were represented at the meeting. And we're being taken advantage of on trade. Canada does have very big advantages over us in terms of trade deficits. We have a big trade deficit with Canada. I was reading where, oh, it's actually a surplus. Not a surplus. It's either 17, but it could actually be 100. You know, they put out a document, I don't know if you saw it, they didn't want me to see it, but we found it. Perhaps they were trying to show the power they have. It's close to $100 billion a year loss with Canada. They don't take our farm products, many of them. Uh, they charge what was 270%, but somebody told me the other day that a few months ago they raised it to 295% for dairy products. 
And it's very unfair to our farmers, and it's very unfair to the people of our country, the workers, the farmers, the companies, and we are not able to trade. They have tremendous barriers up, they have tremendous tariffs. So when I put in a countervailing tariff just to get us up a little bit so the balance isn't so much, it's like this. They said, oh, that's so terrible. I said, what's terrible? We have to catch you a little bit. We have to have a little balance. Even if it's not complete, we have to have a little balance. I say this with many countries. Anyway, we, we came, we finished the meeting. Really, everybody was happy. And I agreed to sign something. I asked for changes. I demanded changes. And those changes were made. In fact, the picture with Angela Merkel, who I get along with very well, where I'm sitting there like this, that picture was, we're waiting for the document because I wanted to see the final document as changed by the changes that I requested. That was a very friendly, I know it didn't look friendly, and I know it was reported like sort of nasty both ways. I was angry at her. She, actually, we were just talking, the whole group, about something unrelated to everything, very friendly, waiting for the document to come back so I could read it before I leave. Anyway, I left and it was very friendly. When I got onto the plane, I think that Justin probably didn't know that Air Force One has about 20 televisions. And I see the television and he's giving a news conference about how he will not be pushed around by the United States. And I say, push him around. We just shook hands. It was very friendly. Look, countries cannot continue to take advantage of us on trade. The numbers are out over the last couple of years. And over the last many years, but over the last couple of years, this country has lost $800 billion on trade with other countries, the biggest one being China. $800 billion. $151 billion with the European Union. They don't take our agricultural products, barely. They don't take a lot of what we have, and yet they send Mercedes into us. They send BMWs into us by the millions. It's very unfair. And it's very unfair to our workers, and I'm going to straighten it out, and it won't even be tough. Okay? Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just following on the first question, um, one, is, is your relationship with Mr. Hayes stronger right now than it is with Mr. Trudeau? Do you plan on involving Congress in any kind of new deal bill or new irrigation deal? I would like to involve Congress, yes. And no, I have a good relationship with Justin Trudeau. I really did. I, other than he had a news conference that he had because he assumed I was in an airplane and I wasn't watching. He learned that's going to cost a lot of money for the people of Canada. He learned. You can't do that. You can't do that. We left. We had a very good relationship. I've had a good relationship with Justin. I have a good relationship with all. I have a very good relationship with Angela Merkel. But on NATO, we're paying 4.2%. She's paying 1% of a much smaller GDP than we are. We're paying 4.2% on a much larger. We're paying for I mean, anyone can say from 60 to 90 percent of NATO. And we're protecting countries of Europe. And then on top of it, they kill us on trade. So we just can't have it that way. It's unfair to our taxpayers and to our people. But no, I have a good relationship with Justin. And I have, a, I think, a very good relationship with Chairman Kim right now. I really do. I think, uh, I hope it's good. Because if it is, we're going to solve a very big problem. I think we've gone a long way to solving it today. Should we keep going for a little while? <laughs> I don't know, it's up to the legendary Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Should we keep going, Sarah? Okay, we'll go. Well, I don't care. Hey, you know, it just means we get home a little later in the evening, right? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, Mr. President. How are you? Uh, I'm nice. good. From nice. the Straits Times of Singapore. Welcome to the country. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed our food. Beautiful country, I did. Uh, I just have wanted to find out, you, you describe this as a process. What is the immediate next step? Is there some ongoing dialogue? Yes, oh, we're getting meeting? together next week to go into the details. And that's our Secretary official Pompeo, level. Yeah, next week with John Bolton and our entire team to go over the details and to get this stuff done. We want to get it done, he wants to get it done. All we're right. also working very much with South Korea, we're working with Japan. We're working with China to a lesser extent, but we're working with China. And you're um, coming back to Singapore? I would come back gladly. Uh, your prime minister was fantastic. We were with him yesterday. He's done a great job. It was very welcoming. It really probably had it probably made a difference. Actually, it's a great place. Thank you very much. Thank you, yes, ma'am.
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, what was it about that first interaction with Chairman Kim this morning that just that made you decide not to walk away after you said that you would know within the first minute if yeah. he was sincere I've about I've said that about relationships. I've said that about people. You know, in the first second, now I was generous, I said five seconds, but you know, in the first second, in some cases, sometimes that doesn't work out. But sometimes it does. Uh, from the beginning, we got along. But there's been a lot of groundwork. This wasn't like we went and we started talking about, as you know, right? We didn't just come in and start talking about these very complex subjects that have been going on for 70 years. Uh, we've been discussing this for months. And, uh, you know, once the rhetoric stopped, once they did a great, a great thing. You know, North Korea did a great thing by going to the Olympics. Because the Olympics, and President Moon will tell you this, the Olympics was not exactly doing great. People didn't feel like being bombed out of the opening ceremonies. You know, they weren't exactly selling tickets. And as soon as, as soon as the chairman, Chairman Kim, said, let's participate in the Olympics, it sold like wildfire and was a great success as an Olympics. It was a great success, he did a great thing. But since that time, pretty much since that time, because as you know, a delegation came from South Korea who had just met with North Korea. They came to the White House. They told me lots of things, including the fact that they'd be willing to denuke. We have one of the great people here today, um, that they were willing to denuke. And once that started, we have, been, we have been really talking about that from the end of the Olympics, when the whole delegation came, to say various things, including denuking. If I may, a second question. Um, in the document that you signed earlier today, North Korea agreed to commit to denuclearization. To borrow a phrase that you have used to criticize um, your predecessors and political opponents, how do you ensure that North Korea is not all talk, no action? Well, I think, forward? can you ensure anything? Can I ensure that you're going to be able to sit down properly when you sit down? I mean, you can't ensure anything. All I can say is they want to make a deal. That's what I do. My whole life has been deals. I've done great at it. And that's what I do. And I know when somebody wants to deal, and I know when somebody doesn't. A lot of politicians don't. That's not their thing. But it is my thing. I mean, again, uh, this really could have been done, I think, easier a long time ago. But I know for, I just feel very strongly, my instinct, my ability or talent, they want to make a deal. And making a deal is a great thing for the world. It's also a great thing for China. Because I can't imagine that China has, you know, is happy with somebody having nuclear weapons so close. So, you know, that's, China was very helpful. So, uh, I think he wants to make a deal. Can anybody be certain? But we're going to be certain soon because the negotiations continue. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead. You mentioned that uh, you have raised extensively the issue of human rights with China. Yes. I wonder what you would say to the group of people who have no ability whatsoever to uh, hear or to see this press conference, the 100,000 North Koreans kept in a network of gulags. Have you betrayed them by legitimizing the regime in Pyongyang? No, I think I've helped them because I think ch things will change. I think I've helped them. There's nothing I can say. Uh, all I can do is do what I can do. We have to stop the nuclearization, we have to do other things, and that's a very important thing. So at a certain point, hopefully, you'll be able to ask me a much more positive question or make a statement. But uh, not much I can do right now. At a certain point, I really believe he's going to uh, do things about it. I think, they, I think they are one of the great winners today, that large group of people that you're talking about. I think ultimately they're going to be one of the great winners as a group. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Would you ever consider removing the sanctions without significant improvement in the human rights situation? No, I want significant improvement. I want to know that it won't be happening. And again, once you start that process, there'll be a point at which, even though you won't be finished for a while because it can't happen scientifically or mechanically, but you're not going to be able to go back. You know, once we reach that point, I'll start to give that very serious thought. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You first. 
Uh, Mr. President, did you also discuss the cost of denuclearization and who's going, how North Korea is about to foot the bill uh, while the crippling sanctions remain in place on China, East Asia, Singapore? Well, I think that South Korea and I think that Japan will help them very greatly. I, I think they're prepared to help them. They know they're going to have to help them. I think they're going to help them very greatly. We won't have to help them. The United States has uh, been paying a big price at a lot of different places, but. Uh, South Korea, which obviously is right next door, and Japan, which essentially is next door, uh, they're going to be helping them, and I think they're going to be doing a very generous job and a terrific job. So they will be helping them. And what's the Go ahead. Behind. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I'd like to follow up on Steve's question. Uh, he asked you how long it would take to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. You said a long time. What does that mean? Well, I don't know when you say a long time. I think we will do it as fast as it can be done scientifically, as fast as it can be done mechanically. I don't think, uh, I mean, I've read horror stories. It's a 15-year process, okay? If, assuming you wanted to do it quickly, I don't believe that. I think whoever wrote that is wrong. But there will be a point at which, when you're 20% through, you can't go back. And how long I had an uncle who was a great professor for, I believe, 40 years at MIT. And I used to discuss nuclear with him all the time. He was a great expert. He was a great, brilliant genius, Dr. John Trump at MIT. I think he was there 40 years, I was told. In fact, the head of MIT sent me a book on my uncle. And, but we used to talk about nuclear. You're talking about a very complex subject. It's not just like, oh, gee, let's get rid of the nukes. It takes a, it takes a period of time. But the main period of time that I'm talking is that first period when you when you hit a certain point you can't go back. It's very hard to go back. And how long will that take? Oh, we don't know, but it'll go pretty quickly. <laughs> go ahead. Sure. Thanks, Mr. President. I wanted to ask again on the sanctions campaign. You yeah. you alluded at the very beginning that the Chinese are not doing as great a job securing the border as they were before. You expressed you know some doubts when Kim went to see President Xi. Uh, the Russian foreign minister was in Pyongyang and said there shouldn't be any sanctions while these negotiations are underway. Uh, and the South Koreans are now talking about restoring some form of trade. So with all of those players appearing to be moving toward uh, eroding sanctions, uh, how can you keep the sanctions regime in place? What leverage do you have on these, companies, on these countries? Well, I think we have a lot of leverage. I think we have tremendous leverage. I, I do believe that China Despite my relationship with President Xi, a man who I told you I have great respect for and like also a lot, uh, you know, we're having very tough talks on trade. And I think that probably affects China somewhat, but I have to do what I have to do. And I think over the last two months, the border is more open than it was when we first started. But that is what it is we have to do. We, had a, we have a tremendous, uh, tremendous deficit in trade commonly known as a trade deficit. We have a, a tremendous deficit in trade with China. We have to do something about it. We can't continue to let that happen. And I think that has um, had an impact on my relationship in terms of the border. I don't think it has a relationship, you know, I, I don't think it affects my, my feeling or my relationship to President Xi, but uh, when we first started, we weren't ready to go that route. And as we started preparing and, and getting ready to do that, I think that's had an impact on, frankly, the border, I, which is a shame, but I have to do it. I have no choice. For our country, I have to do it. Uh, South Korea will do whatever is necessary to get a deal done. If that means we can't trade, well, they're not gonna trade. They're definitely not gonna trade. If they think, and they would do this with our concurrence, if they think that they can do some work because we're very far down the line, we're actually very far. You know, that document, when you read it today, that's far down the line. That's not something that just happened to be put together. This was done over months. And again, the rhetoric was important and the sanctions were important. I don't even know which one was more important. They were both important. Yeah, go ahead. President David Steiner from the New York Times. Um, I was wondering if you could give us uh, some sense of whether the Chairman Kim told you how many nuclear weapons he believes he's made whether he's willing to turn those over first, and then whether in your mind you need to do more than was done in the Iran deal for actually dismantling the, uh, both the uranium and the plutonium processes. 
and whether or not you had a sense that Chairman Kim really understood what that involved and had a timetable in his own mind of shutting that. Well, David, I can tell you he understands. He understands it so well. He understands it better than the people that are doing the work for him. That is an easy one. Uh, as far as what he has, it's substantial, very substantial. Uh, the timing will go quickly. I believe you'll see some good action. I mean, as an example, one of the things with the missile set, I think you're probably surprised to hear that. That was a throw-in at the end, the missiles. Uh, but I really believe, David, that it's going to go very quickly. I really believe that it's going to go fast. And it is a very substantial arsenal. There's no question about it. You know, I used to say, maybe uh, it's all talk and no action. But we have pretty good intelligence into that, although probably less there than any other country. You understand that maybe better than anybody in the room. Probably less there than any other country, but we have enough intelligence to know that what they have is very substantial. This is why, David, I always say that this shouldn't have taken place so late into the process. Wouldn't this have been better if it was five years ago or 20 years ago or 15 years ago and we didn't have to worry about not having a successful meeting like today? So, and I still love my first interview with you, David. Still have that interview, actually. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. We haven't set that up. Um, we'll probably need another summit. We'll probably need or meeting. We could use a different term. But we'll probably need another one. We'll probably, I will say this, we're much further along than I would have thought. I did not think we'd be, I thought, and I've told people, I didn't want to build up people's hopes too much. I told people, I thought that this would be a successful meeting if we got along, we developed a relationship, and we could have maybe gotten to this point in three or four months from now. But it really happened very quickly. A lot of that was because of the foundation that was you know, put down before we met. A lot of things happened very fast. We didn't have, as an example, uh, bringing back the remains. That was not one of the things that was on our agenda today. I brought it up at the very end because so many people had talked to me about it. And I brought it up at the very end and uh, he was really very gracious. Instead of saying, well, let's talk about it the next time. He said, it makes sense. We will do it. And he knew, you know, they know where many of those incredible people are, where they're buried, along roads along highways, along paths, usually, because our soldiers were moving back and forth and they had to move rapidly. It's very sad, but he knew, and, and that was brought up at the very end, and, you know, it was really great that he was able to do it. A lot of people are going to be very happy about that. Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Robinson, more American news. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for the nice way you treat us. We appreciate it. Really, it's very good. It's really beautiful what you do. Go ahead. Um, so you... And now I'll probably get this killer question. <laughs> well, I do want to talk about the future of North yeah, Korea. Sorry. Specifically the people. Are, Kim Jong-un is saying he's wanting a brighter future with prosperity for his people, yet we know they lived under oppression. You showed him this video of what the future can be like. But do you have an idea specifically of the model that he would like to go towards um, economically? Is he open to more economic yeah, freedom? It's a good question. So you saw a tape today, and that I think was done really well, but that was done at the highest level of future development. I told him, you may not want this. You may want to do a much smaller version of this. I mean, you're going to do something, but you may want to do a smaller version. You may not want that with the trains and the everything, you know, super, everything at the top. And maybe you won't want that. It's going to be up to them. It's going to be up to them. It's going to be up to the people what they want. They may not want that. I can understand that too. But that was a version of what could happen, what could take place. As an example, they have great beaches. You see that whenever they're exploding their cannons into the ocean, right? I said, boy, look at that. Wait, what, wouldn't that make a great condo behind? And I explained, I said, you know, instead of doing that, you could have the best hotels in the world right there. Think of it from a real estate perspective. You have South Korea, you have China, and they own the land in the middle. How bad is that, right? It's great. 
But um, I told them, I said, you may not want to do what's there. You may want to do a smaller version of it or, you know, and that could be. Although I tell you what, he, he looked at that tape. He looked at that iPad and I'm telling you, they, they, they really enjoyed it, I believe, okay? Um, yeah, go ahead. A couple more, okay, we'll do three more. Go ahead, go. Yes, hi, Brian. Do you Am I on the cover again this week? Boy, have I been, have so many entirely times. possible. Huh? I know. Do That's you okay. now see Kim Jong-un as an equal? In what way? You just showed a, a video that showed you and Kim Jong Un on equal footing and discussing the future of. No, the I think that I think that I don't view it that way. See, I don't view it that way. Uh, I'll do whatever it takes to make the world a safer place. If I have to say I'm sitting on a stage, I mean I understand what you're getting at. If I have to say I'm sitting on a stage with Chairman Kim, and that's going to get us to save 30 million lives, could be more than that. Uh, I'm willing to sit on the stage. I'm willing to travel to Singapore very proudly, very gladly. Again, I, I you know, other than the fact that it is taking my time, uh, they have given up a tremendous amount. They've given it up even before, and even add the Olympics to it. You know, you could add the Olympics to the question. They went to the Olympics. They took an Olympics that was going to be a massive failure that maybe wouldn't have even opened. And they made it a tremendous success by agreeing to participate. Add that to the list of things that they've done. So, Ryan, if I can save millions of lives by coming here, sitting down, and establishing a relationship with someone who's a very powerful man, who's got firm control of a country, and that country has very powerful nuclear weapons, it's my honor to do it. Are you concerned that the video you just showed could be used by Kim as propaganda to show him as... No, I'm not concerned at all. <laughs> we can use that video for other countries. Go ahead. Mr. President, in the year 2000, President Clinton uh, got a request by Kim uh, Jong-il. Got impressed? Got a request oh. from Kim Jong-il to uh, travel to Pyongyang and meet him. And Clinton... Um, Refused, he sent the uh, Secretary of State Albright. Yeah, he did a great deal. And, and he spent $3 billion and got nothing. And he you started are, making nuclear weapons. Mr. President, and you on the other hand got the request and uh, right away went uh, here to meet him. And do you understand those people who say that you gave him the ultimate present, a legitimacy to a regime who oppresses its people uh, without an uh, ongoing process before you, as a U.S. President, as uh, the leader of the free world, meet and shake hands with this uh, uh, leader of North Korea who is perceived to be oppressing brutally his own people. Okay, good. I think I've, we just answered yeah, the But question. do you understand I'm not oh, I understand it much better than you do. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Yes. Mr. President, Eliana Johnson with sure. Politico. Hi. Hi. Um, you mentioned a couple specific concessions that you got from Kim, the return of remains and uh, the destruction of the uh, nuclear site. And I know you said that was and an add-on. And much more, and much more. Uh, yeah, I know you said the last thing was an add-on and it wasn't in, in the agreement but that he gave you his word. If he doesn't follow through on these things, what are you prepared to do in response and will you lose faith in this process? No, I think he'll do it. I really believe that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, I really believe it. It was really the uh, engine testing site, in addition to all of the other things that they agreed to do. It was the, they have a very powerful engine testing site. that again, we're able to see because of the heat that they, that it emits. And uh, yeah, I'm able to, uh, I, I'm very happy, I'll tell you what, I'm very happy with those two points, the two points you mentioned, but I think you might be referring to the thing that's not in, which is the engine testing site. I think he's, I think, honestly, I think he's going to do these things. I may be wrong. I mean, I may stand before you in six months and say, hey, I was wrong. I don't know that I'll ever admit that, but I'll find, this. I'll find some kind of an excuse. Okay, one or two, one more. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sure. 
Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer Chen with Shenzhen Media Group, China. I just would like to know, uh, will you uh, call a Chinese President Xi when you come back to DC yes. uh, to discuss about the achievements you made today with uh, yes. Chairman uh, Kang? And uh, what, what's your expectation about China's role to accelerate the uh, process to establish a long-term peace mechanism? Well, my expectation about China is that China is a great country with a great leader and a friend of mine. Uh, and I really believe that he's happy that we've made this kind of progress. And I've heard from him. But I will be calling him very shortly, maybe even before I land. Okay? And, and I have to say, you know, and the United States is a great country. And we have set records economically, over $7 trillion in net worth addition to what we have. And, we are almost twice the size, the economy of the United States. Nobody talks about this because you do hear a lot about China, rightfully so. But the United States now is almost twice the size of the economy of China. We have a great country and we're on a correct path. Okay, one more, that'll be it. Oh, South Korea, where's South Korea? I think you deserve, go ahead, go. You deserve one, yes. You deserve one. I've got two questions for you, Mr. President. First, you mentioned earlier that you're going to talk with South Korean President Moon Jae-in over the yes. phone. What do you plan to discuss with him? I just want to tell him about the meeting. Very successful, and he'll be very much involved in the final negotiation. Uh, he's a very, very fine gentleman, also a friend of mine, and uh, I look forward to speaking to him. He'll be very happy when he hears about I've already sent word to him about what happened. I sent the document to him, actually and all of the details behind the document. Um, so I'll be talking to him very shortly. If I may ask another question. In signing the peace treaty, uh, do you hope to, do you, do you plan to work this out with North Korea's Chairman Kim only, or uh, what do you think about the involvement of uh, South Korea and China as the signatory? I'd like to have them involved also. There's a you question as to whether or not we're supposed to or whether or not we legally have to. I don't care. I think it would be great to have China involved and also, of course, South Korea. Okay. Uh, Mike, do they have a transcript? They probably have a rough transcript, which you can give us if you have one. Uh, no, they didn't record it. I don't think they recorded it. Are there any recordings of it? I wish there were, because it is interesting stuff. Say. I, I don't, we probably have some notes or something, but they, they have actually detailed notes, I would imagine. But we, uh, we, had a great, we had a great conversation. It was a very heartfelt conversation. You well, I don't have to verify, because I have one of the great memories of all time. So I don't have to. Okay? Yeah, but I, I don't want to discuss it. But what we did is we've had, uh, we've had numerous discussions. Uh, we've had uh, very important relationships established at Mike's level and other levels. In fact, a couple of people are here from, as you know, from North Korea. They're in the room. We have a few people in the back also from the room. So when we went into this final agreement, very importantly, we really didn't go in cold. We went in with tremendous relationship and tremendous knowledge, and I think that's why we got it done. So I'm gonna head back. I don't know about you folks, but it's been a long time since uh, I've taken it easy. So now we can take it a little bit easy and then the work begins again, and I appreciate everybody being here. I hope we've answered your questions. And thank you very much, and sort of congratulations to everybody, because this is a really, to me, it's a very important event in world history, and to be, Really true to myself, I have to add, I want to get it completed. So Mike, our whole team has to get to work and get it completed because otherwise we've done a good job. But if you don't get the ball over the goal line, it doesn't mean enough, okay? So thank you and sort of congratulations to everybody in the room. Thank you very much, appreciate it.
Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated while the president and his travel pool departs. Pool? Yep, that's what we have. Okay, pool, come here to me. <laughs> All right, <laughs>